Do 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 do. It's Cam Dork. Hello, everyone. This is Cam Dork, and welcome to episode number four in our Carpal Space program playthrough. And in today's episode, it's not Kerbal Space Program, but Kerbal Aeronautical Program, because today we're going to be building planes. <gasps> just, uh, just a plane. Just going in the air. We're not going to go to space. We don't need to go to space to have fun. We are going to learn about planes, believe it or not. And even here, you can sort of start to learn a bit about some things so we can learn. It's so fun to learn. Isn't it fun to learn? I think it's fun to learn. All right, let's go ahead and uh, warp to the next morning here. We, we have some science, but guess what, guys? We're actually not going to just spend that science quite, quite yet. We don't need to spend it. I want to kind of show you how to build a plane with the stuff we have now. So the stuff we have now is is not that far along in the tree. We're only, we're only here, aviation here, so stability gives us, like, some crap. Aviation here gives us some reasonable stuff, but we can build a totally reasonable plane with just this stuff. Okay, so that's that's the goal here. Uh, you don't need all to go super far into this tree in order to build something reasonable. You can start to learn with the simple parts, and then when you get the better parts, you can be like, oh my goodness, the part's better. Um, but before we do that, <clears throat> let's do something very important and talk about this runway. This runway, one, this runway, is garbage. It's garbage runway. This runway is so horrible. I can't even. I can't rotate around to see it. Uh, I don't know. You can't even really see it. It's so bumpy and just awful that um, you you definitely want to upgrade this thing. You can see all the bumps and cra and cracks in it and such. And what happens is as you're going down, you'll just like bounce and bounce and bounce and typically like just explode because the runway is so horrible. So let's upgrade this. Uh, and here you still will do that. There's like weird bounces that sometimes happen with the plane. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily a bug or an intention thing. I, I don't know. But here inside the space plane hangar, we're just going to build plane. We're not going to go space plane. We're just going to go plane. Uh, so we'll start with the same same sort of setup as building a rocket, except this time we're building it on its side. And uh, the symmetry is a bit different too. So you have uh, you have basically you have you have different types of symmetry that'll go around here. It's it's more or less the same, though. Um, so anyway, let's let's first. Like, okay, it's it's awesome, this cockpit looks great. But uh, this is the standard cockpit that you get, but um, we need some fuel tanks first because we're gonna have to be using jet engines for fuel. Uh, now the difference between the jet engine and a rocket engine is that a rocket engine has, well, here's a fuel tank for a rocket engine. I'll smack that on and let's right click on it, see what's inside. Hey, look at that, it's liquid fuel plus oxidizer. Well, that makes sense. In order to burn something, which is effectively what's happening in a rocket engine, you need a fuel plus oxygen gives you CO2 plus water, effectively, and, and a bunch of other garbage, depending on what you're burning. Uh, nitrogen burns to give you ammonia and blah blah blah. But anyways, the chemistry is that you need oxygen in order to have combustion happen. It's required. So what's different in the air? Well, in the air, we use these fuel tanks. And the difference is, just like in... An airline flight from Paris to New York, you're just using fuel because combustion still happens. You just need air from the air. You need oxygen from the air, not from the fuel tank. But we still need oxygen, so we'll still have to have an intake, but this can serve as our fuel source. Um, so I'm just going to build a super simple aircraft here. I only need one of these. I'm not going to build something huge. Uh, in terms of engines, we're going to use this. It's our tiny little Juno basic jet engine. Boop, right on the back. We don't need it right there, though. Not for now. For now, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a, a solid rocket booster on the back just because it looks fine and this looks like a plane-ish. We don't necessarily need to use this, but it's here just in case we want to kick it into gear. Um, and we, we probably will at some point. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put I'm going to put two of these MK0 fuselages here. We're going to do the symmetry deal so that we have two of them. And we're just going to put them like, um, yeah, maybe right there. Uh, and then let's see. Now, now here is where we talk about intakes. You know what? No, no, you know what? I'm just going to put them here, and then I'm going to copy them. I'm going to put two of them. Ah, hold on. I can't really do it without... Okay, wait a minute. Eh, there you go. And now it's going to be kind of tough for this. Sometimes it, there it goes. Okay. We're good. We're good. We're totally good. All right, now now it's, it's very reasonable. Okay, there's that. Let's put the two Juno engines here. Oh, what do you know? It's not uh, duplicated. Luckily, though. Doop. There we go. Oh, excellent. That's so great. 
And uh, like I said, you need air for these engines. So you need to burn air, but air has to come from somewhere. It comes from the atmosphere. You need to scoop it up, and you need what's called an intake. So this is the easy stuff, guys. This is the super easy stuff. Anyone can build a thing. They can smack some wings on it. Let's just smack some wings on it. Let's just put some of these swept wings on it. And uh, you know what? Let's uh, let's let's crash things. Let's crash things. This 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 is beginning to look like an aircraft. Um, yeah, let's throw some wheels on it. Let's put them here, maybe. I don't know. I I'm going to build this like like you might build it, okay? Like you might build it for the first time, and this is, in fact, like what many people do. They're like, this looks like a plane. Oh, wait, we need a tail. We need a tail. So let's go ahead and put a wing on there. Let's put a tail fin on there. It looks like I see airplanes with one tail fin. That seems right. Like, this this looks about right. And then we need to have a way of controlling this. So maybe these elevons. There we go. We'll put two of them, we'll put them over here. That looks right, that looks totally right. Um, and you know what, maybe we need to have a way of pitching this thing up and down. So it doesn't have it on the tail, but maybe what we do is we either put these wings up front. Yeah, maybe, maybe that that's what we do. We put these wings up front, and then we put uh, wings on the back too, because you know, you can't, can't have enough of these wings. These things have uh, control surfaces? Yes, it does, okay, good. So yeah, we put these on the back, and uh, and and we just we we try to fly this. This looks totally like a plane. Let's fly it. Let's fly. Let's just fly. Okay, we'll put the staging right. Um, let's just fly this thing and 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 say this this is this is gonna be OMG plane. Okay, let's launch it. Let's do it. Let's. This is a plane, right? It's so easy. No big deal. This is gonna be no problem at all. Okay, it's looking great. We're a little, we're a little front heavy. It looks like that's 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 odd. Let, let's just go and and, and 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 see what this thing's going on. Full speed ahead. Let's go. All right. Let's turn on SAS because that's going to help us a lot. This is looking right. Oh, okay, something's happening. But that's fine. We don't need to worry about that. Why is he? Why is he? Why is he doing all that stuff? Wow, he's really. This is weird. But that's okay. We're good. Look at that. We're doing fine. This is flying. This is totally flying. All right. Hold on. Give it a second. It's gonna come up. It's gonna. It's. We're going fast enough. We're going fast enough. Come on, come on. We're going fast enough. Okay. We're not. We're not. We're not lifting off the ground yet. But we're going fast enough. Come on. Maybe we need some extra power. Okay. That looks right. Whatever just happened looks right. Okay. So if you just kind of build a plane that looks like a plane to you and say like, seems good. That's gonna happen. It's just gonna happen. You're not gonna be able to launch. You're gonna be able to launch, and it's just gonna do weird things. And we're gonna learn by like thinking about it a bit how to build a plane now am i going to build the best plane ever in the history of ever no but we are going to build a plane that is totally reasonable so first of all you have to know a bit about what the 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 simple thing that you have to know is these buttons are super super useful in fact the most important button out of them all is probably this this it's the center of mass it puts a ball right on your you know what you've built. This is the center of mass for the thing. If we put more mass in the front, so I don't know, let's put a, something, I don't know, we can't really put a more mass in the front. If we put more mass on the back, let's just stick another, let's just stick a hammer fuel, uh, there you go, see that the, the center of mass goes back if you have stuff on the back, right? Because you're, you're basically loading it up. The center of mass indicates where this plane will pivot. It will pivot with this as its pivot point. So if it knows it's an if it's a nose up and it does it does it does this, right? The nose comes up. When the nose comes up, it's going to do this with a rotating about this center of mass. And the key is that each thing you put on the aircraft, you know, the planes, wings, the engines themselves, they are forces and they act on your object. If they are off the center of mass, they will have profound impacts on what actually happens. So, for example, if I have this, um, if I give a, if I give our, ourselves some wings, and I just put one wing over here, okay, the center of mass is, sli is shifted just a little bit to the left, and say I do one better on you, and I and I take uh, one of these other MK things, and I don't know, just make something silly. Let's take an engine there. Okay, so now we have engines over here too. Let's look at this, which is the center of thrust. Now you'll notice that, in fact, you know what I can do is um, take away this engine too. Okay, so, oh, oh, take away this engine too. Get rid of everything there. And uh, there you go. Okay, so now the center of thrust is way over here. We only have one engine. Okay, I guess it's as you're looking at it. It's way over here. We only have one engine on that side. And 
right in the middle of the plane, right here, is the center of mass. So if we put a force, if the force is acting, thrusting, you know, back, it's going to push us forward, but it's not going to push us forward equally. You kind of, by in, by instinct, you intuitively know that when we turn this engine on, the plane's going to go, wee, and it's just going to rotate around this way. It's going to turn to the right. Um, and we know that just instinctively, but now we know it because we know that the center of mass is where things pivot, and when you put a force onto your craft, depending on where you are respective to the center of mass, it kind of gives you an idea whether it's going to rotate in a certain way. And since it's over here, you effectively have a lever that you've created, and you just... you. You're now sort of pushing the lever over and around this way. So this is kind of the guiding principles that will help us when we build our aircraft for realsies, which we're going to do right now. So first of all, we're just going to, I'm going to kind of show you that idea. So there's the center of thrust. We don't have to worry about it too much because we know that our, our engines are centered within this aircraft and they're going to be, it's going to be a symmetrical aircraft. So we are fine if I, if I do it right. There you go. Okay, so, so we're fine. The center of thrust is going directly through the center of mass, meaning that it will push the plane forward, but it won't move it around either way. It won't cause a rotation, or it shouldn't cause a rotation. So now let's put the wings on the thing. And let's look at, so let's get rid of that center of thrust, and let's put a aerodynamic overlay. So it sticks this blue thing right down here, because there's nothing aerodynamic on here right now. There's nothing causing us to lift up. We need a wing surface for that. So let's throw some wings on here. I'm going to put some of these delta wings on here. Uh, this is this, these are these are nice for the rockets, but they're actually also nice for the plane. Believe it or not. Um, so, with the delta wing here, you see, okay, we see it looks like this. So we get some lift. We have a we have a lift. We have aerodynamics, but the lift is over on this side. So what is this going to do as we catch up and get and uh, and gather more and more speed and we travel down the runway, sort of in in this way, right? like traveling down the runway. We'll get more and more speed, and as we get more speed, we get more lift. And as we get more lift, it's going to lift up here behind the center of mass. So what is that going to do? Well, it's behind the center of mass. It's as if you took your finger and said, boop, right here, and the center of mass was here, it would rotate. So that means we're going to have a nose-down situation. So that is bad. We want to move this center of lift up uh, into the forward. Uh, but like I had it uh, before, I had sort of, um, you need wings to control not only uh, different axes of the plane, you need wings to control, to give you lift, but then you need them to be like control surfaces too. So when thinking about control surfaces, we need to consider that we have to control the plane in a few different ways. We need to control the plane um, in, its, in its roll maneuver, which is banking left and right, that's called roll. We need to control the plane on its yaw axis, which is just rotating like this. And we need con to control the pitch, which is up and down. So the pitch is controlled by... We can control it here. And again, we're controlling it here. This, this will work because it's behind the center of mass. These little, these little things are the things that actually rotate, these, little, these tiny things. These are the control surfaces on this particular wing. And they do actually... In fact, I think we can... Yeah, we can show it. See, like they're they're deployed. So right now it will it will push the wing up and it would it would pitch it forward, right? Um, but we're not gonna we're not gonna use these for for uh, for pitch. We're actually gonna use canards. So that is eh, we'll use one of these winglets. We will use two of them up front. And these guys are um, are going to be used to control the pitch. And now remember, we kind of don't want a situation where we pitch up or pitch down. We want a situation where we're really balanced. And in which case, what we want to do is get that center of um, lift right over our center of mass. That's the easiest way to do it, I can, th I can tell you. So that's the more or less the easiest way to do it. It's going to give you a nice and stable flight. You can put it in front or behind just a little bit. In fact, it's kind of sometimes good to put it in front and the thing I think we'll do that just a bit in front just so it slightly edges a, a, us up in terms of a nose up. Uh, and then we also need to control so we have a roll access, we have pitch access, and in fact we'll we'll set these to only control. I'm going to turn off yaw and roll. This is only controlling pitch and I'm going to actually decrease the total uh, authority limiter so it doesn't deploy in its entire crazy direction. See like this is crazy uh, crazy <laughs> amount of, of uh, control. We only want uh, maybe yeah maybe like 75. That's going to be enough. That's going to be plenty and we can actually control this while we're in flight too if we really need to uh, these are going to control the roll axis and so if i deploy it 
yeah, we see we can also decrease these uh, again, maybe about 70 for this one. And then uh, the finally the yaw axis is going to be controlled by the tail fin. So correct, we need a tail fin and we're going to have to use that to control the yaw axis. This guy does not need much at all. In fact, I, we're going to cut it down to like 10 degrees. Yeah, that's more than enough. It's only a teeny little movement, but it's totally enough to control wherever we need to go. And this is a plane that is reasonable and should fly. There are one, there's one last thing to worry about. We're going to get rid of that center of aerodynamic, but we're going to keep the center of thrust because there's one last thing to worry about, and that is the gear. So we want to be careful with the gear because first of all, with this gear, you see how it's going? It's like bow-legged. This, this, this gear sucks. This landing gear sucks is all I can say. So let's, um, let's, let's replace it in here again, but we know that we need it's, it's bow-legged. Um, <laughs> what we should try to do is get your back gear mm, a little behind your center of mass. If you put it right on your center of mass, it's going to have the tendency sort of to, to want to to to, to have its, uh, its butt's going to drag a little bit easier, a little bit too easy. So you want it to be the center of mass to be in between your gear, but more or less very close to the back gear. So we're going to put it like right here. That should be okay. Um, it should still give us, see, again, it wants, your aircraft wants to pivot on the center of mass, and so you want the wheels to be more or less close to that center of mass. If they're right under the center of mass, it's going to be easy to pivot, but it's also going to mean you're, you're not quite stable on the runway, so you want it to be a little bit back. Um, the other thing is we're going to want to take this gear and rotate it, because, my goodness, this is bow-legged. Look at that, look how bow-legged that is. So we want to, we want to have it to be, um, reasonably, reasonably straight. Uh, if, if it's bow-legged, it means it's digging in the edges of the wheels and weird things happen. It's it's going to cause your aircraft to be like, wee down the runway. It's, it's, it's a bad idea. So there you go. That, that's looking pretty good. Um, the other thing is this gear, I am going to rotate a little bit this way because that way it's kind of wheel is there. I'm also going to want to take it and uh, let's see. I'm going to move it a little bit forward. It's a little bit too far back for me. Let's see, maybe maybe right there. Um, that should be kind of okay. Yeah, maybe right there. And you can see that our our, our gear here is a little bit uh, lower than the gear in the front. So by na by its nature, our aircraft is going to be a little bit nose up to begin with, and that's okay. And this, I think we're good. We pretty much have all the all the balances la uh, landed out. So this is this is a uh, this is this is a standard plane. So this is a um, simple thing. I don't know. We'll save it. And we'll, we'll fly this one now. We'll put the staging correctly, though, of course. We'll save it again. And um, let's launch. Okay. So this is a simple plane. We're going to attempt to land it, take off and land. So hopefully this will work. Um, and we'll see. If we don't quite, if we notice that something is a bit odd on the runway here and on our takeoff, we'll just go back to the hangar and we'll adjust it as we see it. And this is going to, what you're going to need to do when you build air, uh, planes before. So I haven't built this one or fly this or, yes, flown this one before. So I don't know how it's going to be, um, but it looks like it's going to be okay. So that's that's our, our, our uh, yaw axis. Uh, this is what's going to happen with our roll axis. And our pitch is controlled that way. Oh, one more thing. You probably want to get rid of the reaction wheels. We did want to get rid of our monopropellant, but that's okay. And for some reason, we have a little bit of a wobble. I'm not really sure what's going on there. I think that'll go away. All right, let's 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 take that away and let's... What is going on? See, I told you, we, we, you have weird things that happen. Stop. Stop with this wobbling. Can you... It's it's like trying to fix itself, too. That's really weird. All right, it, it'll fix it. There you go. It's, it's fixing itself. Okay, I don't want to go crazy on the um, on the throttle, but we we want to kind of get it nice and stable first, and then uh, maybe about 75 or so. It's probably going to be enough to to lift this thing off. So it's getting a little light. You can feel it's kind of getting a little light. So this should be enough to lift off. But hold on, let's get ourselves straight. It's going to be it's kind of hard to control this cars. Okay, there you go. Woo. Okay, we got nose up. We got flippies. Okay, flippies happen. Oh, you know what? Let's 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 watch it. Okay, so, so a little bit of flippies happening. The flippy syndrome. Flippy syndrome meaning that, hey, guess what, guys? Our, um, our aerodynamics was in front of our center of mass just a little bit. That little bit might be too much, actually. And in which case, we can do one of two things. We can either move this back or move this, uh, move this one back. Uh, I'm going to try to actually move this whole thing back a bit and see what happens. 
So I, I, I do want to move this back a bit. Um, maybe right there. I am going to also move this back just slightly too. And we're going to have them right on the center there. This should make it more stable. Our gear now is a bit too far back for my taste. Just a bit. We're going to move this in a hair. That should be okay. Okay, so that is a simple thing too. All right, so just a little change right there. We just want to want to tweak a few things. Let's launch this one and hopefully well this one shouldn't have the wobbles at first. So, a little learning exercise. And again, this is this is what you go through when you're building a plane. It's a lot of sort of test and test and see what happens. It doesn't usually happen when you're building rockets, but in planes, yeah, totally totally happens. Uh, because these things you have to worry about stability. Rockets just go up. Just go up and turn and you're good. And then in space, you don't have to worry about stability in space, right? All right, but here you do. You have to worry about stability. And the, the flight model is totally reasonable here. It's not a flight sim, but it, but it is it is a totally reasonable flight model that they've built with this game. All right, so we're, we're, we're again doing a little bit of uh, tracking down the runway is having a little bit of an issue here, but that's okay. And now let's... There we go. Okay, that's so much better. Look at that. That is so much better. Our gear is going to remain down. We still have a bit, so if I let it go and don't do anything, we still have a bit of a pitch up problem. Uh, we can deal with that in terms of uh, adjusting our trim. And in fact, I have no idea what the settings are for that. Uh, what are the settings? No. I have no idea what the settings are. What are the settings? For trim. Usually usually there's a yeah, video and graphics, gameplay, 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 gameplay. Uh, you know what? We're we're good. Let's just that's fine. So let's just let's just let's just let's just let Jeb try to figure it out. Uh, he doesn't use trim, but effectively he is trimming. Okay, so let's let's do some flying. All right, so we're gonna make a little left turn here. We'll get ourselves up a bit. We're doing okay. See, look, this is a totally stable aircraft. I mean, it's 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 more or less stable, I should say. So we're gonna do a little flight pla pattern here. Typical flight pattern, by the way, guys. Is um, so we're eh, we're a little low, but. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit of a flight pattern here, so we're gonna we're gonna do a left turn standard traffic pattern. This is very standard. So um, the the runway is at a heading of 90 and 270. So right now we're going uh, we're all we're we're kind of tracking a bit a bit to the to the right of the edge of the runway. I want to have a nice wide turn if I can. Uh, there we go. Let's let's turn back to 270. So this is cool. Look at this. This is a little plane. This thing can't go too high. I'm sure. Uh, but we can go a little faster, that's right, we can actually put this rocket engine in gear, and our nose-up situation will probably get worse if we do that. And why is that? Because when we use this rocket engine, it's going to use up this rocket fuel, it's going to get lighter in the back. Oh, actually, that'll help us. Yeah, go. <laughs> so it'll want to pitch down a bit more then, so th this will actually help us a bit. Ooh, there we go. Now we're k kicking up speed. Yeah, look at that, going fast. Jeb, way to go, you are a wonderful pilot. All right, now we're going a little too fast, so let's let's slow it down. <laughs> slow it down, and uh, we're going to be coming in for a landing. So, uh, in theory, we're going to come in for a landing. So let's see if we can do this landing. Now, I want to bleed off a bit of the speed first. I'm going to do do this a bit. Okay, let's bleed off a bit more speed. <laughs> we're totally fine. Remember, our our takeoff speed was about 75, and that's a good uh, a good gauge for what your landing speed is going to be. It's going to be around 75. So we're going to do our little turn. We're doing it a little aggressively here. And this is a, again, so since we know the runway is 90 degrees uh, and 270, either one is fine. Okay, let's let's get our speed up again. There you go. About 100. We're in a nice cruising speed. We're about 2,000 and uh, whoop, well, well, wait, we, we, we are past the runway. Okay, hold on. Hold on, guys. This is a sloppy turn, sloppy turn. It's okay. All right, it's okay. We slow down when we're turning, but that's normal. Uh, all right. So we want to track to the left a bit of lo of 90 because we are to the right of the runway. And this uh, prograde vector is actually quite useful to know like which direction you're traveling in. So I want to slow down a bit, give ourselves a little bit of slowdown. We are a little. We're more or less on track. Really, it's. It's going to be a matter of of doing these things a bit, uh, just like doing a bunch of landings a bit and seeing what what happens. 
we know that um, when you're landing, when you're in kind of like this slow fight flight mode, when you're in coming in for a landing, you have to, oh, we are way too high and way too fast. So we have to realize that in order to slow, we are way too high, way too high. In fact, we do need to actually come down a bit. It's, this, is, this is the wrong way to come down. It is, um, it is not a good way to come down this way. Really, when you're in slow flight, your, um, your pitch actually is the way to control your speed more so, and your, your, um, your throttle is really there for controlling your altitude. You have to think about it that way. Um, but in this case, we're just so high that I, I'm, j I'm just going to do a dive right here. We're not even in slow flight mode. Okay, it's much better. That is much better. Okay, we needed to really, really cut down on that altitude, and we are doing okay on the speed. Okay, now we want to make sure we're not too low. Okay, this is a little bit... Oh, this is, this is okay. This is okay. We're a little bit... Uh, we're tracking the runway reasonably well. I am... I am going okay. Okay, this... Uh, a little bit, a little bit. Come on, come on. Let's see if we can do this. I, I, I should be able to land. I should be able to land this thing. It's pretty, pretty easy to control this guy. He, you know, there's some fine-tuning that can have happen. Okay, we're a little high now again. We're a little high. And I, I'm just doing this by the look. Yeah, we're definitely high. We're way high. I can tell we're high, okay? So there we go. We are we're so high right now. <laughs> okay, here we go. See? Here we go. Here we go. We're coming in for landing. We're, we're okay. We're going to be fine. It's a, it's a long runway, so it's okay if you're high. It's not really a big deal. We're not, we're not going for something perfect. Okay, we're totally landing. Oh, my good. Oh, okay, a little bouncy. We're good. We did it. That was that was a little ugly, but Jeb is gonna survive. Damn it! If we didn't bounce. If only we didn't bounce. Ah, oh, I should have saved so I could do that again. But that's that was. Oh man! Now I want to land it really well. Hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. We're gonna land this thing. Yes. Give me a second. We're gonna come back to it. Okay. I'm gonna take another flight, and uh, uh we're gonna come in for the landing. Hold on. All right, we're coming in for a landing this time. We're a little, uh, little okay. We're a little crazy here. Hold on, hold on. Little, we're a little fast. We're a little fast, uh, and we're a little bit to the right of the runway, as you can see. So we need to go to the left a little bit. We need to track to the left of 90, and we need to um, raise our nose actually. And at the same time, we also need to lower the. Uh, we're going to be coming in way too high and fast. Of course, we always do. We always do. And now we're to the left too much. Ah, oh, boy. But that's okay, we're coming a little too high and fast, so it's nice to, to go back and forth to bleed off some speed and some of that goodness. Okay, that's looking not bad. Uh, we're still a little bit to the left. We can easily make this up, no big deal. We are doing okay. We're a little high, but again, the runway is long, so eh, it's okay. We're going to maybe land. We're going to land like halfway down. It's okay. That's, that, that's, that's fine. We're going to go for gentle landing. This these landing gear can't really take too much of an impact. So, we're going to we're going to try for a gentle landing. And again, like I said, we're going to be flaring up just before and we're going to be landing about halfway down, maybe a little a little more than halfway down and we're going to be fine. We're going to have plenty of runway, don't worry. Don't you worry. Plenty of runway. Nice and gentle. Gentle, 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 gently, gently. There we go. Perfect. Okay, we're a little far down the runway, but that's okay. Brakes, a lot of brakes happening. A lot of brakes happening. A lot of brakes happening. There we go. Okay, we're looking good. Now, nah, that's that's in a controllable speed. Okay, we're going. Okay, we may run out of runway, but that's okay. We landed the plane. It's fine. Everything's good. Come on, we're going to run out of runway. Brakes, let's happen. Let's, let's make things happen, brakes. Let's make things happen. There is this runway goes down at the end. Uh, it's fine. We're good. Park it break. Parking break. We are stopped. Hello! We did it. Okay, we landed. That was a bad landing, but you know what? I'm usually better at landing, but I, I, I got the video in front of me and stuff. It's gonna... It's fine. All right, so let's... There, there you go. There's there's planes. Um, we're gonna probably go into planes a bit more uh, at another time, but yeah, it's, don't worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Now... To finish off the episode here, we're going to build ourselves a little science rover uh, that's going to go around Kerbal Space Center picking up science. Because guess what, guys? Each one of these biomes, just like the launch pad was a biome, uh, was, a, was a specific location for science. And remember from the first episode, I told you science is all about the experiment 
and a location and different pairings, unique pairings of those gives you science. So we need to either change the science or the location or both. So the location of the launch pad is one, it's a biome, so is the VAB, so is the mission control, so is space plane hangar, you see where I'm going with this? We can actually visit along all these places within Kerbal Space Center and build ourselves a nice little science rover. So let's go ahead and just do a new thing. Uh, let's build something real simple. So we want to put all our science equipment on it. We have more or less all the science equipment we need. We will be using a rocket engine. No, I'm sorry, we'll be using a jet engine. Dink, little dinky little jet engine right there. Uh, let's give ourselves some wheels here. This time it doesn't really matter where our center of mass is, quite honestly, because... Um, yeah, we're we're just gonna we're, we're we're just running around here. As long as as long as the center of mass is in between these two things, we'll be fine. Okay, let's do that with that. Okay, uh, and let's actually rotate that because it's a little it's a little wacky if you don't. Uh, it's fine. Yeah, let's do it a little more. Okay, a little straight up and down if we can. Good. Uh, that's fine. Yeah, that's that's okay. We're we're gonna move it a little bit more though further. Um, and we're gonna place it. Yeah, we're gonna move it further up. There we go. Good. Okay, that's fine. And then we're gonna actually put on some science equipment. So let's see the goo. We'll put the goo on here. Let's get a little closer so we can see it. Let's put the goo on both sides. Let's put the barometers right here, nice and close to this, because what we want is for the um, the pilot to be able to get out. He's gonna hang on to these things and he's gonna be able to take all the scientific data and reset experiments. Now. We have the Material Science Bay, which acts just like the Mystery Goo container in that when you use it, you cannot reuse it. However, before, that's because we had Jeb piloting this thing. He's not going to pilot this. Now we're going to actually have a scientist who can reset experiments. So hooray for Bob Kerman. He's going to be useful, finally. Um, he, he will be useful later on, too. And uh, let's not forget we have a jet engine, so before I forget, it won't work unless we have an intake here. So let's just stick an intake on the nose. And I think that's it. I think that's all the science we have available. Yeah, we have we have everything there. So this is um, science-o-matic. Okay, it's our science-o-matic rover. We have Jeb in the cockpit, and we're good to go. Let's launch and do some science. So the procedure is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be... Let's first of all just like sit here on the runway. We'll start to do science. We'll observe material bay. We'll keep that. We'll observe the goo. We'll keep that. We'll observe the barometer. We'll do the temperature. We'll keep that. We'll keep all of these. We'll do a crew report. We'll keep that. We'll do an EVA report. And that will be our science cocktail, if you will, that we're going to take at every single place. And then we just take the data from all of these. We collect it. It gives us a warning that uh, removing the experimental data will render this module inoperable. Restoring functionality will require a scientist. Well, thankfully, we have one who can restore it for us. Thank you. And, of course, we get that error message every single time we do these things. And now we're ready to board and head on over to the space plane hangars, our first stop after the launch pad. You want to be careful not to go too fast, because um, if you do, you will flip this thing. Absolutely will flip. Not a good idea. So I uh, keep it under 20. It's okay. Just kind of... You know, if we go crazy, we will flip and, and be and have a bad time. So we don't want to have a bad time. That's okay. Uh, we can we can actually. We're not gonna close the intake. Hold on. No reaction wheels to control this. We're just gonna use that front wheel. Um, yeah, the the front landing wheel is a rotatable thing. All right, so we're almost coming up to the VA to the space plane hangar here, and we're just gonna roll around the Kerbal Space Center, gathering data. Isn't this cool? It's like a little science expedition right here at home. Okay, so we're getting close. Uh, whoa. Okay, <laughs> I'm be careful. That was a quick turn. Okay, so now once we're here, we're actually in the biome of the space plane hangar. We can slow it down a bit so we can uh, grab the science. And now it says material study from space plane hangar. Observe the goo from the space plane hangar. Great. Do this. Pressure data. Temperature. Uh, crew report, yep, and an EVA, and we're going to take an EVA report, and hopefully we're not going to run into anything. No, we're good. And then uh, let's just slow it down a bit. Oh, we can't actually. Oh, okay. Let's slow it down a bit. Hold on. Okay, now we can get away, get out again. All right, let's take the data. 
we took it from this side, so let's take the data here, take the data here, collect the data, remove data, and restore, collect the data, remove data, and restore, and then board it, and here we go. Now we are, I think this is at this point, is this still space plane? Yes, this is still space plane hangar. We're going to go to mission control next, and it's going to be, it's going to be this over and over and over again. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. We're going to just uh, speed through this so uh, we can, we can get to it. Uh, I'll, I'll see you on the other side. Okay, well, here we are. We've done it. We've gathered, I think, all the scientific data we have. Uh, we started out in the runway, we went to the space plane hangar, mission control, VAB, the crawler way, actually, the landing pad, we, <clears throat> we still had some science experiments there, tracking station, then R&D, astronaut complex, and administration. I think that's more or less all the biomes here. In any case, let's go ahead and recover this vessel. We are... Coming back and seeing how much science we got. I think I might have missed a few or two, one or two there, but holy crap, 186 science. We now have 414 to spend. That is pretty cool. Bob got no experience, but now let's go ahead and spend our science. So now we'll, we'll definitely, we'll just spend away. General construction, we get struts. We have some heavy rocketry. Yeah, fine. I guess the poodle engine is fine. But let's do, uh, yeah, electrics here. It's going to get us, give us a better probe, um, which is capable of um, stabilizing itself. Docking port junior. Yeah, we're going to start to do some docking pretty soon, I think. Um, this maybe not so useful. RCS, not useful at this point. This is RCS uh, thrusters. This is that monopropellant. This actually lets you use monopropellant. <clears throat> landing, we get a little better landing gear and other things. Yeah, maybe sure. Have 189 left, so we need to, we can spend about two of them. Aerodynamics. Yeah, let's do that. Kind of, maybe. Let, let's maybe wait. Uh, advanced construction could be useful uh, for sure. This this radial decoupler that's a little bad. At, um, do we have a radial coupler, coupler yet? Yeah, we do. We have the we have this one, which is which is not great. This one's a little better. It, it separates the rocket a bit farther out. Um, but what we have is totally doable and totally works. Fuel systems we can do. Yeah, fuel systems is very useful. And propulsion systems, this is good for little little satellites, which we'll have pretty soon. But maybe I'll use... I'm um, uh, not going to have you, the use for that at this point. Heavy rocketry? Eh, kickback is kind of nice, but we're not going to use that yet. Until we get... Oh, wait, we do have the big tanks. Hmm, okay, we could probably try it, but um, <clears throat> we don't need it. Uh, landing, uh, you know what, let's, let's do landing. We're gonna want the, these struts are pretty decent for landing. Let's go ahead and use that. Okay, so that's, that's that. You know what, guys, um, that's gonna do it for this episode. We, we flew. We built plane and we learned a bit about the plane mechanics. And, um, I did actually do a successful landing. I did a fine landing before, but that stupid little landing gear just couldn't handle it. It was the second bounce. It was like, nope, gonna break. And it totally did. And, um, <clears throat> it's okay. I got it on the second try. And uh, even though it was a little ugly, but it was fine. It was fine. <laughs> we stopped. Did we stop on the runway? No, but we we stopped. We stopped like right here. That's okay. It's close enough. Um, <clears throat> close enough. It's not the best plane, but guess what? It was a totally serviceable plane. And um, then we also did a rove around the Kerbal Space Center to gather some science, which is pretty cool. All right, guys. Well, in the next episode, we'll be heading into space once again, and uh, this time possibly going toward Kerbin's other moon, Minmus. So, uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, why not, right? So, see you in that episode. I will see you in episode five. So, thanks for watching, and take care. Bye-bye now.